Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to continue now with our second last speaker for the day, and somebody that I've become very fond of, fond of over the last few months, uh, having many Skype chats uh, all the way from Vienna, the wonderful Klaus Donner, and uh, we certainly have struck an interesting relationship, sharing interesting in bits of information about different artifacts and tools and things that we find in our respective little um, you know, jobs that we do, roles that we fulfill. So Klaus is going to continue now with his part two of Unsolved Mysteries and take you on a continued journey of discovery with some of the phenomenal artifacts that he's been collecting for a long time now that really defy any kind of logic and force us to reconsider our human origins and our human history. So let's give a round of warm applause for Mr. Klaus Donner. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I have to say I'm very sad that I have to leave uh, tomorrow evening because the few days in your country were just wonderful. I met so many good friends and you live in a great country. Yesterday I was talking about giants, little people, human with uh, elongated skulls, uh, human and dinosaurs. Today I show you many so-called O parts, O parts like uh, the uh, out of place artifacts. Of course, I cannot give you any answers. Uh, a, few a few months ago, an American writer wrote a book about me uh, and she made the subtitle, Digging for Answers, Getting More Questions. And this is the reality. Uh, on some of the artifacts, we did uh, scientific researches. These results, I can easily explain you and tell you but uh, for many of the artifacts, there is no answer until now. Uh, a few years ago, when we tried to do the exhibition Unsolved Mysteries in Vienna, I, start, I studied uh, around, all, around the world, all the museums for strange artifacts, and finally we had a list of 356 pieces. A friend of mine, a museum director, wrote a lending request to all of his, to his colleagues. And out of these 356 uh, requests, we received only one agreement. Because museums, if they lend you some artifacts, they have to give you an explanation. And most of those, those pieces were also quite impossible to give an answer. So today, I start with uh, the age of human. On this photo, you see the footstep the positive and negative side of a footstep, human footstep, it looks like a shoe step, but uh, the scientists of course said immediately this is a natural formation, but the strange thing on this object is that you can see on the right side, here, uh, here and here, you can see a crashed Trilobite. This is an animal which concerned the official scientists. Trilobites finally disappeared in the mass extension at the end of the Permian about 250 million years ago. And it's definitely that this uh, trilobite is crashed by a weight. So that's quite impossible that human cannot be 250 million years ago lived already. Here you have a better view, so you can see the positive and the negative side and the crashed trilobite. This is a human footstep found in the Palaxi River in Texas. There are a lot of these footsteps parallel with uh, dinosaurs' footsteps. And of course, the official announcement was immediately, this was done by the creationists, because there is the Creation Evidence Museum allocated very close to the Balaxi River. So they took out one of these footsteps and they sliced it into, uh, they cut it into slices and you could see on the inside, sorry, you could see that warm holes in the stone also had the same form like the footsteps, so it was impossible 
a fraud or a fake. But as these footsteps were parallel with human footsteps, uh, with dinosaurs' footsteps, that wouldn't have been possible. Age dating also there around over 100 million years. This is a petrified human hand uh, print, also in a uh, uh, petrified, and uh, also the age dating should be over 50, 60 million years. So is it reality that we human only are until now over one million year old, or did human live already long, long time ago? This iron cup was found in the United States in a coal mine, and it was enclosed in a big uh, stone brick. And when they broke this piece of coal inside was this metal, this iron cup. And you can see that the pressure of the petrification of the coal uh, put some part of the coal directly into the iron and deformed it. The age dating of the coal in the area where it was found, geological uh, age, is 65 million years. This is a petrified human finger, and they cut it also into pieces before they did some uh, x-rays, and you could see that the inside, where the bone is, is much uh, stronger than the area where the meat was, and you can see even the fingernail. These pieces are presented in uh, Glen Rose at the uh, Creation Evidence Museum. Here you see a monastery in Colombia. The Santo Ecce Homo Monastery was built 1620. The area in Villa de Leva, that's the place uh, called uh, Villa de Leva, is full with uh, fossils. The whole area you can find big fossils, small fossils, and the padres, the fathers, uh, used some of the fossils for the construction and from the, for the floor of the monastery. On this picture, you see a great researcher from Colombia, Professor Jaime Gutierrez. On this picture, you see a petrified pineapple. Here, you see an avocado. Here, it's a bigger photo. This is a mice, petrified mice. And this is Father Huerta. He is triple professor, professor for archaeological plants, professor for plants, and anthropologist. He found in the area of Via de Leva many petrified, cultivated fruits and vegetables. In his hand, he is holding a, a cocoa and a petrified banana. That means uh, there must have lived human because animals, or if there are so many uh, fossils, dinosaurs wouldn't have been able to cultivate fruits and vegetables. Here you see a close-up of the cocoa and the banana. This is a pinos, and they built up a small museum close to Via de Leva, showing all these petrified, cultivated fruits and vegetables. Here is Padre Huertas with uh, human, I, I, sorry, I cannot read it on the picture, I forgot the name of this bone. Uh, you can see that this one is much bigger, it's about 20 centimeters, so these human living there must have been also bigger than we are in our days.